Hey, my name is Per Andreasson. Uh, I am the drummer of Royal Republic, and you're watching a clip of me doing what I do and what I've been doing for the past 13 years. But before that, I had a previous life being a percussion student, and in that life, I wrote this piece called Tim Play, and that's what we're going to talk about today. I slipped into classical music by accident, more or less, because I realized when I was a teenager that I really wanted to work with music or be a drummer. And my teacher, this great man, kept saying, like, you should learn to play all of the percussion instruments like marimba and timpani and all that stuff, because then you are much more likely to sustain yourself as a musician. But then as my education progressed, the Swedish system sort of split it up. So you couldn't be a rock drummer and a classical musician. I thought when, when I was nearing the end of my university masters, uh, I started to feel really restricted in classical music. And I realized that being at the back of a symphony orchestra, uh, taking orders from a uh, conductor was not really my thing at all. And I had so many classmates that were all about it that I realized that I will never get a job as a, in a symphony orchestra. When I wrote Tim Play, I came, that happened because we were playing all these pieces in the percussion ensemble and I was apparently always complaining about the way they were composed. If there was a cool section, I wanted more of that cool section, but it only appeared once in the whole piece and it never developed. And then there was this other section that had nothing to do with the previous section. And I just, I was like, ah, every time we had a percussion rehearsal. And my friend in the ensemble said like, dude, why don't you write something of your own if you're like this, if this bothers you so much, write something better. And I was like, all right. And then I went off for a summer and I composed Tim Play. Uh, and I had a very, I really wanted it to be about beat and, and I really wanted it to work on many different levels. I wanted it to be complex for the nerds like myself. Um, I wanted the drum core um, guys to get into it and be able to think that, hey, this is really intricate and cool. And I wanted a normal person who had no perception of what was going on to still be able to say, yeah, this is cool. And the easiest way to do that is to put a backbeat. I say in the foreword of the piece that it's about polymetrics and it's very much about polymetrics. But I, I think the polymetrics part came from um, a band called Meshuga, a Swedish band that I grew up listening to a lot. And they only do, they do heavy metal and it's really brutal, but it's about double kick drums and polymetrics. And there's always this I don't know, but uh, or or like hertas in the feet with the guitars. And I thought that was really cool, and I I was so fascinated by how that whole thing worked that I listened to that to the point where I could do it myself. And then at some point I realized that I could create those beats myself. I had done it so much learning how they did it and what every beat was and I could sit on my bed and really play along to it that I had this ability to just well always feel everything in 4-4 even though it was going on you know with different time signatures. Um, and then I also wanted it to be like uh, this whole robotics thing, Tim play, I liked the, the, I think a friend of mine played Canned Heat, and I know we played Sharp and Stick, but they're both great pieces, and uh, 
And I liked the use of just instruments that weren't in instruments. And I thought that brought a level of theater to the piece that, you know, everybody will see like, oh, break drums or oh, look, a tin, a tin can. He's, he's playing a tin, you know, it, and it sounds pretty cool, I think. On the surface, the parts are kind they kind of look simple. But when you start playing it together with other people, you realize that there's like at least two time signatures going on at the same time. And you are just a, a, t a tiny part of both of them. And you need to listen to what the other players are doing and understand what the other players are doing. And it's, it makes it really cerebral. The whole piece is in tempo and it's very clear where the tempo is the whole time, except in this one section. Uh, and it's just, I think, two bars or something uh, where you can hear like almost like a bouncing ball, like And I stole that from a British electro artist called AFX Twin. A friend of mine gave me a cassette, I think, way back, like before the millennium, uh, before the turn of the millennia. And I thought that thing was so cool. It was like... It was literally somebody dropping a ball and then it was looped, but it was looped in time. And then there's references to Predator in there, the movie from 1984 as well, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like when you see, when you have this heat vision thing, it's in there. It's, there's this theme going, go, 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 go. Go, 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 go. That's when, when you see what he sees, that's his heartbeat. This is in 7 8. What I want people to get out of this is just to listen to each other and that the sum of all parts are, are you know, bigger than the one person and i think this is a fantastic recording of this piece i'm really amazed how well it sounds and and how well the students play and uh yeah i hope you enjoy it hello my name is yuru and i play percussion one for my part i have several things the star of which are these beautiful thing cans over here as you can see, some of them are pretty worn out from, the, from all the drumming and all. I even had to like replace one of these cans with a new one here, just so that they all still sound very good. In addition to these cans, in front of the cans, I have a set of woodblock set up. Alongside two symbols, a China symbol and a splash symbol, as well as a hidden little kotale right beside for convenience. To finish up my setup, I have a hi-hat set up on my left, as well as a pair of bongos. Hi, my name is Cheyong. I'm playing percussion too. In my setup, I have one bass drum here, one kick drum below me, and four toms in front of me. Alongside that, I have two sets of pitch wood block here, and additionally, three pipes that were added by me. Finally, I have five tin cans which are chocolate powder and milk powder tin cans. Hi, my name is Beat. I play percussion three. So I will introducing my setup. My setup, I have a lot of metal stuff. So the first one is metal pipe and another set over here and tin can and amazing seal bill. And also have the tom tom. Boom, bam. And the last instrument is bass drum. Hi, my name is Pat. I play percussion four, and this is my setup. My setup is combining of drum and metal. So I have two two small drum here called boobam, one snare drum, one tom tom, and for the metal things, I have two pipes, two metal pipes here one metal pad and seal bell. Lastly, I have hi-hat on my right. Tim play is all about relationships. Pairs of players interact and collide throughout the work. At figure two, 
players three and four established the first of these partnerships in a delicate exchange of interlocking rhythms and accents on the octabands. Players 1 and 2 also have their share of moments together. At figure 4, bongos and wood blocks combine to form an unusual texture. One of the many fun aspects of this piece are very tricky overlapping rhythmic patterns. Just before figure 9, for example, you'll hear my complex pattern of 7 beats repeating over and over. Making things more complicated at figure 8, players 3 and 4 underscore my pattern in 7 with their own pattern in 5. Figure 22, players 3 and 4 enjoy a back and forth conversation with players 1 and 2. As the piece goes on, the conversations get a lot more complicated. Player 3 and 4 combine on a hypnotic pattern on metal pipes that continues over changing meters. Player 1 soon adds bongos to the mix providing a nice contrast of metal and skins. Player 2 then takes the spotlight, soloing over the unusual accompaniment. piece wouldn't be tin play without tin cans. At figure 19, player 1 gets the first shot at a bouncing ball effect on the cans. Next, it's my turn at figure 20. Finally, at figure 21. Balls seem to be bouncing all over the place, first between players 1 and 2, and then between players 2 and 3. At the heart of this piece is rock and roll. It was composed, after all, by a rock drummer. You can hear its influence in both short sections and extended grooves. A short snippet just before figure 3 foreshadows that rock and roll feeling. While the last example crescendoed into a powerful burst, another section at figure 7 does just the opposite, taking us from powerful to delicate in 4 short bars. Here and there, rock and classical get jumbled together in a sophisticated blend of cross rhythms and dynamics. One of the coolest features of this piece is a recurring funk section 
that grows in intensity with each appearance. At figure 3, we hear the groove for the first time. By the time figure 9 rolls around, the funk section has developed into something louder and more complex. Finally, at figure 21, the full group lays down a solid driving groove, embellished with my Chinese symbol. At figure 25, everyone finally comes together in a virtuosic section that requires great technique, incredible concentration, and serious communication. The rock feel continues over 10 beats to a bar, then 8, then 7, then 5, then 4, and then 5 again, leading to a powerful climax that you can hear only in the complete recording. Thank you.